What is going on, you beautiful people? It is Josh. Today, we are going to show you how you can add your own APIs into Clay. So why would you even want to do this? Uh, so Clay's got a ton of enrichments, tons of data connections, but sometimes you might have your own data provider that you want to add in to your tables in Clay, um, and they don't have a built-in connection, so you can add your own. Now, you need to be, uh, I think, on the at least the $350 uh, a month plan or whatever it costs right now, but it's really not that technical. It sounds scary. It's not. I'm not that technical. I figured it out. I promise you, you can figure it out. So let's get into it. All right, so for today's example, I'm going to be pulling in the Lead Magic Profile Search API endpoint. Now, this is what it looks like once it's completed. Instead of it looks like a built in integration over here, it's just going to have the little clay symbol and it's going to show a 200, which just means it's a successful call and it returns some data. And if you click in there, you can see the data from your API call. So like I was saying, why would you want to do this? Because in this case, like Lead Magic actually does have a connection. But if we go ahead to add enrichment and we go to Lead Magic, you'll see that they actually don't have the person profile option. So this pro this option exists in their API. So and if you go into their API documentation, just whatever app you're dealing with, the documentation for the APIs are pretty straightforward. Um, for Lead Magic, I mean, just Google it. Lead Magic API documentation, you'll come right into this. And you can see all these different endpoints that you can hit. And in this case, we're going for profile search because this one isn't available in Clay right now. So if you come over here to the right, um, I've entered a dummy API key. So Good luck trying to use that one if anyone wants to try and hack this, but it's pretty straightforward. So in this case, we need to copy, first we need to add the connection with the API key. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna come in and you're gonna click add an enrichment over here, uh, really wherever you wanna put it. Let's just put it right to the left of this guy. And we're gonna go add enrichment and we're gonna go HTTP, and you're gonna click this guy. So at this point, you need to add the headers. Now, uh, once you've added it, you can just select it from here, but in this case, I need to add one. So I would go to add account, uh, type in whatever you want, you know, Josh, test, lead magic, key. Call it whatever you want, just make sure you call it something. Now, in this case, we're gonna go back to the API documentation and you're gonna to wanna to copy in this header. This is what authorizes you uh, and basically lets you uh, lets the API know that you actually have credentials to access these endpoints. So you're gonna paste that in and in this case, you're going to paste the header. So, or I'm sorry, the key. Now you paste the key in here. Now this isn't a real key, so everyone relax, uh, but you click save and then you're going to get something that looks like this added in. So now that you've added your key to the HTTP headers, we're gonna scroll down and we're gonna go back to, I'm actually just gonna open this up in a window right next to us here so that we can see it. And we're going to, this is a, request post so you'll see there's a couple different types of api calls you can make this one is going to be a post now the endpoint this is actually going to be where we are sending or requesting our data so we're going to go right here this is you're going to copy and paste the url into here uh, and we're going to scroll down and we are going to first off let's finish doing the rest of the headers here so under headers, we're gonna add a new key pair. So here we're gonna do accept and just copy and paste this stuff directly from the documentation. And then we'll add one more and we'll do content type. Now, I don't know if this is actually necessary to do. I think Clay might already default these types of requests to this, but this is what the documentation says to do, so we're gonna do it. And then for the body, you're gonna copy in this portion right here, but you're gonna change this to be 
Now we need the LinkedIn profile. So I'm gonna hit slash and I'm gonna go LinkedIn. And this is the person profile. I love that it displays the data here. So you can see that it is the profile. Now I'm going to set any uh, only run if. So in this case, I would only want this to run. So only run if email status is equal to valid. Because before this, how my workflow works in Clay's, I'm gonna run um, a email verification check first, and then it's gonna come back valid. Output is correct. Now I'm going to save and I'm not gonna run. Um, and hopefully this thing worked and I come over here and I click run just to test this out. And we get back at 200, which is usually a good sign. So at this point you click into that 200 cell and you can see all the data you're getting back from the API. So it's really that simple. That's how you add your own API call into Clay. So you can pull in whatever data that you want. And then obviously you click through here and you add whatever you want. So, you know, let's add this as a column. We'll call this about from their LinkedIn profile. Um, and you just kind of go through and pull out whatever you want. Uh, there can be a bunch of nested stuff here as well. Um, but yeah, it's really that simple. So anyway, I hope this wasn't overwhelming for you. I It's really not that complicated. I hope like this gave you a little bit of confidence to deal with this technical stuff. Clay makes it pretty dang easy. Um, anyway, I hope you found this valuable. Uh, thanks for stopping by today, and I hope you have a wonderful day.